And Moxley looks like he just can't wait to get out of there because he has a match in two days in Japan. Then you've got Yuta, who this is his big triumphant return. He's in a totally random match. This was the least watched segment on the entire show. And it caused a lot of problems involving travel. It didn't sell any tickets. It didn't need to be done. Like, can we stop doing things like this? Brian, Brian and Vinny, along with Granny and Craig, and sometimes... Roddy storms past Christopher Daniels, and he goes straight to Tony Khan. And his hair. I didn't even get in the match, even though that's the way the match works. Therefore, I demand to have a world title match anyway. And Tony Khan, God bless him, he's laughing through the entire thing. He can't keep a straight face. And Tony's eyes get really wide, and he looks all over. Did you hear that? And then he says, that's a great idea. I said, what? <laughs> this segment was like an all... Timer. An all timer. Yeah, you're right. That'll happen. That'll happen. Uh <laughs> going back to the match, I do want to just The say, match Go ahead. Do you mind if it's I bearing give the lead, my but thoughts that's fine. here? This makes no sense. It's stupid. It's very stupid. It sucks. I agree with all of that. Will Ospreay had to beat guys from all over the world, and Roddy had to beat a guy who wrestled at the Thurston County Fairgrounds last weekend. <laughs> Did he? He beat uh, uh, Williams. Can't remember his name. Anyway, the blonde kid from Canada. Yeah, Stellar here we review. Go. <sighs> Travis. Jeez. Travis Williams. He's awesome. You really put him over. Yeah, he's he's great. Yeah. The show has broken me. The segment uh, broke I... me. So we've been uh, charitably lukewarm on these two shows until Kyle O'Reilly and Will Ospreay. Things turned around. Holy shit. He's so good at everything. He has won a fucking one. They cannot beat him at Forbidden Door or at, or oh, at any other Vinny. point in 2024. Oh, man. They can't do it. Oh, man. It's be so dumb. Is there anything else you can do that afternoon? I bought a new chair. Broke already. Uh-oh. I paid almost three thousand dollars for what? it. What? It unplugged underneath. Guy came over today and fixed it for me. Okay, he so, plugged so it, it in. It's not broken. It was unplugged. Yeah. A few specially selected questions. All right. I see. That she is going to ask. Okay. And presumably answer. And then Vinny will go through the Facebook. Alexander Hamilton wanted what? to know. <clears throat> Alexander Hamilton. You heard her. Alistair Hamilton. <laughs> His, his brother. <laughs> if I watched Psycho, what? yes, I did. Oh, the movie. And Andrew Collins <laughs> says his mother watches uh, Young and the Restless and uh, Tucker. We're moving right into the soap opera report? Yeah, that's where we're at. Oh, I thought Vinny was going to read a couple of questions. Oh. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Vinny, what do we got for the wrestling report here today? Talk or something. <laughs> Talk, Talk or something. Or something. <laughs> so a Niven comes in, jumps on Bailey with her overweight body a couple of times, doesn't mind playing dirty, leaves Bailey on the mat in lots of pain. I found this book. It's called called Limericks from the Heart. Is this a Lanny Poffo book? Let me finish this one. This this guy's name is uh Lanny Poffo. <laughs> and there are 335 pages in here. Can you guess what it's about? Uh, smoking. Oh. <laughs> Sean, hey, Sean yes. the Wizard. <laughs> Have you read it? We this read it a... every week for about six months. When I first started. <laughs> wow. He hit him right where the remus of the mandible... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> right where the remus of the mandible articulates with the magnibula foss of the temporal bone. No, he did. <laughs> and the brain said, I was going to say that. And I watched it once and I was just fucking dying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I decided I got to watch it again. Right. And so as I'm watching it the second time, I hear the patter of footsteps. And then next thing I know, Hanalei is looking over my shoulder. Hmm. 
And then I hear more footsteps. And now my wife is looking over my shoulder. And uh, and they were transfixed by this fucking interview. Like, if fucking aliens came to this earth. <laughs> and they were like, what is this pro wrestling? Well, this is the fucking clip you show them. There is nothing else on this earth like what I watched in this fucking segment. MGF, as advertised, returns and he opens the show. He talks about watching him from his couch, the new faces. He insults them all. And when uh, Roosh interrupts, calls him MHAF. That's made me laugh. Roosh had to move houses because of MJF. True story. I read that and I was like, what? He, he had to move houses. Do you remember that segment where MJF gave him that giant briefcase full of money? I do, I do. Okay. Well, apparently... I don't know where he lives in Mexico, but uh, people believed that uh, that was real. And so he moved to a gated community. Yeah, they tried to go to, to, go to his house to get the big yes. briefcase full of money. Yes. Later, we're going to talk about this BCC versus Rando CMLL wrestlers match. Very down on this match. Somebody was like, you know, what? All, you say you want a party match, like, what? Well, I actually explained in the thread my problems. I can talk about it here. But you know what? This was also a party match. There was three straight party matches basically to open the show. I had no problem whatsoever with this match. Right. This was put together to be a banger. I've heard a lot about Jericho and this gimmick and apparently cage match or whatever, Reddit, wherever the fuck people like don't like things. They really don't like this Jericho deal. I love this. It's awesome. And what is best about it actually is not even Chris Jericho. The bounty hunter Brian Keith is just there to fucking blow his fucking stack. Jericho's all happy and waving. Big Bill's all happy and waving. Brian Keith is swearing. Fucking cutting a promo. The Blackpool Combat Club versus Volador Jr. E. Magnus E. Rugido E. Esfinga. Moxley looks like he just can't wait to get out of there. Because he has a match in two days in Japan. He should probably be on an airplane. But he's doing this match. Then you've got Yuda, who this is his big triumphant return. He's in a totally random match. And he gets the pin, which means absolutely nothing. Because it's against four guys that nobody has any faith in whatsoever. They know the CML guys are going to get pinned. Like, he gets nothing out of this. Uh, you look at the quarters, and this was the least watched segment on the entire show. And it caused a lot of problems involving travel for people leaving the company or leaving the country and coming into the country. It didn't sell any tickets. It didn't need to be done. Like, can we stop doing things like this? They're wrestling, and Tony deadpan says... AEW. It's where the breast wrestle. Correct? And there's a long pause. And Tony Schiavone just mutters, Best. <laughs> then Mariah steps up, intervenes, and tries to make peace by suckling them to her own bosom. Mariah goes from Dom to Sub. And she's bending over. She drops to her knees. And they're both rubbing their breasts in her face. I'm pretty sure this is the kinkiest feud I've ever seen. The granny is already doing Nana's dance, and then Swerve and Nana spot her, and they go out and pose with her, and Nana dances with her, and Swerve never does the dance. He just stands there looking cool. It was the best thing on the show by Miles, Swerve and Nana dancing with granny. It brought a tear to my eye. Oh, this no. is a third straight week the show's been good, and it did a great number. It did a great number. And there was no sexy red. No sexy red. Some people just like these stories. So these characters. Jordan Grace versus Stevie Turner. I thought this match was awesome. The idea that we're going to introduce this particular character to our audience, and we're going to make her look like a star. And, of course, it's Jordan Grace. So all she needs is a chance. She will look like a star because she's great. Fans loved her. They're chanting Jordan. They're chanting TNA. TNA chance on NXT. In 2024. God. Yeah. They couldn't even get TNA chance on their own show for years. This is one of the reasons the show is doing so much better. You've got guys like Trick. Trick was a fucking sidekick. Well, over the course of two years, he got elevated, and now he's the world champion. You've got guys like Javon Evans, 20 fucking years old. He's great, but he's not just there to do moves. Like, they're elevating him. They're linking him up with the world champion. They're having him beat the hell out of guys. 
You're seeing new people coming up, getting opportunities, probably better than any show in wrestling right now. Natty won, and then she reiterated it's time for a change. I presume they have to be doing this to try to get people talking because their contract's coming due, mm. and the own heart cup is coming up. Mm. So I presume that that's, and then she'll announce that she's re-signed or whatever, and they get another win over AEW, however their, whatever their idea is, I don't know. Heels and faces versus heels and faces. And I have seen this done in Mexico, and it works, because despite their differences, the teams do work together. This did not work. I complained about this on two shows already, yeah. and I had somebody there that was like, are, are, are you kidding me? And I was like, no, it sucked. And their explanation was, well, the ladder match is every woman for themselves. So it makes sense to have baby face. And I, I was like, no, no. Like, it, uh, this didn't sell every woman for herself. All it did was confuse everybody. So Ava calls out Ethan Page. Ethan, within like 30 seconds, is interacting with the crowd like a human being and doing a better promo than anyone else has done in NXT all year. The stipulation is Ethan's first match will be a title shot at Battleground. Trick insists that she sign. She does. And so they do a stare down. On the whole, I thought that was a terrific show. There's a lot of shit everybody could learn from NXT and their growth. And, yes, and reasons actually. for why they have grown over the last year.